is Alexandra with This Is Improv, and I am here with the amazing Timothy Davis. Hi, Tim. Hey, Alexandra. How are you? Good. How are you doing today? Doing, doing pretty good. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so I am the uh, producing artistic director and one of the founding members of New City Players. It's a, a local Fort Lauderdale-based theater company, so we really established ourselves in 2016. That's when we did our, our first season of shows, but had been doing one-off shows the years before that. I went part-time with the company in 2017 and have kind of slowly worked up to full-time and brought on another person on staff, but have really grown the company and grown our audience. And we do classic and contemporary theater. So we'll do, last year we did a Raisin in the Sun, just mm -hmm. a famous play from uh, middle of the 20th century, and then we'll do some contemporary plays. Another big facet of what our company does that we care a lot about is community engagement. Something when we started, there was sort of like a dual idea that at the time I was teaching and we were only doing uh, our seasons during the summer. Mm -hmm. So we'd go nine months without doing anything. And so we thought, how do we stay connected to our audience more than just through social media and through posting things? Um, but actually on the ground. And so we came up with an event, it's called City Speaks. It's a storytelling event. Uh, so keeping that theatrical idea of, of telling stories, uh, but these were actual people telling their personal stories. So true, true to life stories. And that event caught some traction and it really kind of solidified this community angle bent. And since then we've created some other community programming. NCP Lab is where actors and writers, theater artists come together and create new work. Uh, the forum is where we have uh, discussions with expert panelists on, on pressing cultural issues, sort of always tying it back to the plays that we're doing. Um, and just really trying to take seriously the idea that as a as a nonprofit, as a charitable organization, we serve our community. We exist for our community and we exist by our community, by their generosity through donations and grants and, and sponsorship. And it's sort of that double-edged thing of, you know, the most human company wins is the subtitle of a of a book called Marketing Rebellion. You know, the best thing to do as an organization is to really invest in your customer or your client or your community or your audience, whatever that right word is for you. And that's going to create fans. It's going to create donors. It's going to create advocates. And the growth may be slower because it's not as flashy or big, right. but I think yeah. it's going to ultimately be deeper and more meaningful. And you guys do an amazing job at connecting with people as people, you know, so yeah. that's really awesome. What was that aha moment of this is something that I want to do for the rest of my life? So I, I think I, I think I experienced it in some part in high school and then I got a little bit sidetracked and thought that I wanted to be like a pastor, like in yeah. ministry. Uh -huh. And so ended up going to, ended up getting an undergrad degree in biblical literature wow. and minoring in theater, which is shocking to think about now. <laughs> um, but while I was in college studying that, you know, I was taking classes in history and philosophy and just doing like a liberal arts type of thing, which I really appreciated, but also doing a lot of theater. My junior year of college is when I realized like, why am I trying to not be an actor? You know, because that's what it was for me. It was like, I want to be an actor. It's really where the passion started and where it still is. And so I kind of shifted my focus and was like, I'm going to finish this degree, but I'm going to be an actor. And then my senior year, two things happened that really solidified that I look back in my memory and I'm like, this is going to be the rest of my life in some form or fashion. The first one was I did a show, I actually did a Christmas Carol, <laughs> uh, the musical, and I, I was playing Scrooge and as a 21 year old, which is just so silly. And my director during the middle of the run pulled me aside. Uh, her name is Tracy and she's one of our board members now and has come down and Cool. acted with us and direct with us, which is really cool. But she pulled me aside in the middle of the run and she was just like, you know, you could do this for the rest of your life, right? And it was just like having a teacher bestow yeah. that on you was like, uh -huh. oh, wow, this is really important. And then later that year, my now wife and I and a couple friends, uh, we drove to New York for spring break and we <laughs> saw Philip Seymour Hoffman in Death of a Salesman on Broadway. And that play ended and it was like, this feeling I'm having right now, that performance, that's what I want to give to other people. 
right. something that I just received, I want to try and give to other people. So really since then, I just, no matter what, I'm finding a way to perform, to act, mm-hmm. even if that means that now I'm a marketer and a fundraiser and a producer, <laughs> uh, all of those things are really in service of being a, a, a storyteller through acting. That wanting to give the audience something, there's a like, yeah, I do it for them, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Part of that is a lie. We also live for the applause. Oh, uh, yes. Oh, let's yeah. be honest. Yeah. So, <laughs> Fragile egos in, in need of this as often as possible. Yes, let's... you are on This Is Improv. Is there any improv form of theater, some kind of form of it that has interested you or caught your eye or any kind of use of it that you've had in your career? My relationship with improv is, is kind of interesting because I, I actually, I think I love it. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I haven't really done much of it formally. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And part of that was because in, in high school, uh, you know, we would do it as a unit in theater class. We would do yeah. it as a warm up. You know, we'd play Freeze and Justify. And we'd even do it as a part of a production, you know, like uh-huh. before this scene happens, let's improvise the scene, you know, like where are these characters coming from to sort of get you into. And I've used that same method as a director before, like, okay, we're gonna start the scene when we start it, but first let's do a few minutes of improvising before that, which can be helpful and just sort of warming up your mind, getting you in that headspace so that you can start the scene. I think the real thing, you know, and I was on our on our late show a couple of weeks ago, I had Elena Maria Garcia on oh, and she's a, okay. uh, yeah, amazing improviser. She's one of my amazing. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, amazing actor. And yeah. her, her acting has a very improvisational quality to it. And she talked about improv just being boot camp for actors because it really forces you to be present in the moment and listen, mm-hmm. which is, if you can if you can master that as an actor, and then of course the memorizing lines and having sort yeah. of your actor brain telling you that here's the cues, here's the lines, if you can meld those things together, uh, it's gonna be much more interesting to watch. In college, when I went through a unit with my, with my professor, Tracy, who I mentioned, It's called viewpoints training. It's very physical and spatial Mm -hmm. and improvisational and kind of like externally technical. So just Mm -hmm. like make choices about your voice, your body, the the space that you have between you and other actors. Mm -hmm. And don't really try to analyze or think about those choices. Do them and try them, particularly in the rehearsal process. And that completely unlocked something for me as an actor where I had approached it from a very intellectual, you know, I need to like become the character and think like the character and feel like the character. And now I'm like, that's hogwash. That's not even real. <laughs> um, it's psychotic at a certain yeah. level. You got to understand the text. You got to understand objectives. You got to know what's happening in the scene. Right. But in the process of rehearsing, try things. Like, mm-hmm. don't analyze how you're going to say something or how something's going to come out or where you're going to move. Mm-hmm. Just like let your body do and your it. voice do it and go yeah. somewhere. Uh, and so that's the thing where I, when I think about improv, I mean, it's at the core of great acting is that it feels spontaneous. Yeah. And that's the thing that I really want to achieve as an actor. But at the same time, I would love to do some more formal improv, you know, in the future, probably. And Jack and I were did a lot of acting first before we did improv. We didn't start doing improv until our college years, realizing its beauty, because one of our professors said, hey, you ever heard of Second City? And then he was like, go. <laughs> It's really fun when you when you meld the two worlds and you use mm-hmm. them to your benefit. What's something that's probably one of your most favorite exercises to do? I was introduced to something a couple of years ago. One of the, one of the directors who I've hired uh, at New City Players. Um, she's also a student of my professor. She introduced this thing when she directed Twelve Nights called just checking in, like a voice and movement check in, and it's fair. I think in the in the beginning, I thought like this is kind of silly. Mm-hmm. But then she just directed a show that I that I acted in for New City Players back in October. And we would oftentimes just do this check-in and all the actors and the director stand in a circle and you just kind of step into the middle of the circle and you make a sound and make a movement that represents the day you've had. And we were often, often rehearsing at the end of the day, you know, six to nine in the evenings. So all of us have had full days Right. Many of us coming from jobs, yeah. we've just like had a day. Yeah. And now we're supposed to rehearse and like right. it's hard, yeah. you know? It's hard when you're doing the, the double life. Uh-huh. But just that simple exercise 
10 minutes, um, people going around a circle doing that. And she would change it up and have different variations. Mm. It just like connected everyone in the room and mm. made us laugh a little bit and kind of took the pressure and the tension out of the room and got you connected to your body a little bit. Yeah. I think simple things like that are, are really valuable, even for professionals, you know, or yeah. even when you're working with people who are older and seasoned, mm -hmm. you know, actors should never be above play. At the end of the day, we're making believe. I mean, it's it's child's play. Even in the most serious of tragedies or dramas, we are playing pretend. And so knowing that, experiencing that, and keeping that in mind helps you stay humble, helps you stay agile, and helps you connect to the other people in the room. What's something I can't tell just by looking at you people are always asking me you know because i'm six five you know like i'm a big <laughs> guy large yeah. presence so strangers are always asking me if i played football or basketball uh -huh. you know there's always an assumption that i am was like a sports person they don't assume that like I've committed my life to the arts. <laughs> I think for people who maybe I'm an acquaintance and like the reason they know me is because of the artistic setting. Yeah. Um, I think I'm pretty good at portraying like a sense of confidence and calm, uh -huh. but I'm actually terrified of what people think of me. Oh, yeah. Aren't we all? Isn't that why we all kind We're, of think going? Yeah, to <laughs> we all are. I think I'm really good at lying about it. Ooh. Or maybe not as good as I think, but yeah. <laughs> we get to pretend to be someone else on stage. That's the whole benefit. Is <laughs> what's a what's a fun fact about yourself? I feel like a lot a lot of things about me are pretty like you would expect someone who's <laughs> kind of in theater and committed oh. their life to that. Maybe this side of me that's a little that's a little different is since my brother and I did this play together back in 2017. It's called True West, and it's uh -huh. these two brothers, Sam Shepard play. And I played a character who's just like disgusting and greasy and violent and angry and scary. And he's just like drunk the whole show. And he's just like cheap beer, living off the land. Uh -huh. He's a thief, you know, just like that type mm -hmm. of vibe. I kind of like connected through that play. I think I connected to the side of myself that's like, I love cheap beer and Flanagan's and uh -huh. just like crusty old Florida man things, <laughs> I, I kind of love. <laughs> yeah. Except, I don't have to be like an artsy right, person all right. the time, you know? Like, Maybe it's a Floridian thing, but that's like a thing that I totally understand. Yes. Like, like that, I just like cheap beer and relaxing and not caring for like a second, you know? Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, just like having a smoke in a Miller High Life and getting some greasy Flanagans. Anything that you want to mention? Yeah, so w one thing we've been doing during this whole COVID-19 pandemic, we've been doing a, a late show live on Instagram, on New City Players Instagram every weeknight, just bringing on a different South Florida theater artist, interviewing, playing games, talking. I think we're going on our 10th week now of doing yeah. that. You know, I had Ryan Maloney, our other staff member, he took a, he took a week and then one of our other company members has taken a week in a couple weeks because I'm just like, I, can't, I, I think I thought when I started that, like, oh, this is going to be a few months, it'll be great. But now I'm like, this is going to be like forever. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. So, so we've been doing that, um, which is been great and, and raising money for the South Florida Theater League while we're doing mm -hmm. that and have you know hel helped bring in particularly small donations for that in another project that we have every other week which has been very exciting it's called NCP lab we usually have about 30 people in a, in a zoom meeting we'll have a prompt people will write a short play and submit the short play in a zoom meeting together for two hours and read the short plays and do breakout sessions at the end with some of the company members leading and talk through the plays, check in with it. how are you doing? You know, we've had people like not from Florida get connected yeah. from like around the country come in. And, but even the like 20 minutes of checking in with each other and saying, how are you has been really meaningful to our theater community. So that's been really cool. And then on the horizon, uh, we're currently working on a, a scripted series, <clears throat> excuse me, a podcast. Oh, cool. um, so I'm working with a playwright to turn one of his plays into a podcast series and we sent microphones to all the actors. We're recording from home. Um, so trying to continue to tell stories when right. we can't do it on a stage. Oh, 
awesome. Excited. More info about that will be coming. Up. We're going to advertise that a lot. So yes, please check out for more info about New City Players. All things involving them will be linked down below on our Instagram and our YouTube page, so that you can find them wherever you need to. Thank you so much for coming on here and me yeah, getting to interview you this time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. My name is Alexandra. We were joined by the amazing Tim Davis. Thank you so much and goodbye. See you next time. <laughs> Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you.